He who keeps my deeds until the end. It's interesting. You know, who keep, he who keeps my deeds. How do you keep somebody else's deeds? Hmm. You know, it, it doesn't say, it's not about our deeds. Jesus is saying that we are to keep his deeds. His deeds. Now, his deeds. what he wants us to do, not what well, we no, want. No, it's not even that. And the idea is, if you look at the Greek here, you know, the Greek word, in, in Strong's Dictionary, it talks about this word keep, all right? Mm -hmm. um, tereo means to attend to carefully, to take care of, to guard, to observe. Right? It's not what we do or what we have done that this is talking about. It is that we are to hold on, to hold fast to, to observe and attend to what Jesus has done. And overcoming is ultimately about living and walking in what Jesus has done. His deeds. His deeds. And that is always centered on the cross. If that is not where we are spiritually, where we are spiritually, then we will, as mentioned just above and from Paul's letter to Timothy, we'll focus on ourselves. Yes. We'll become boastful and arrogant. We'll begin to trust in our deeds. And then there is the great and grave danger of falling into that snare, that trap, that Jesus said many will fall into. Yes. Right? In the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount ends in Matthew chapter 7. And Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, talking about that day, that great day when we come face to face to him. He said, many will come to me on that day saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then Jesus said, then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. <clears throat> Matthew 7, 22 and 23. They're coming. These are, now obviously, these are people who think that they have this incredible relationship with Jesus Christ because of what they have done. So they come into his presence, coming into the presence of the Lord of Lords, coming into the presence of the King of Kings, coming into the presence of the King of Glory, who's standing there waiting to greet his people with nail-scarred hands and saying to Jesus, Look what I did. Look what I did. That's holding to your deeds. Mm. Yes. Instead of trusting in his work on the cross, which is holding to his deeds, right? We are to attend to and observe the cross of Jesus Christ. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18. You want power to overcome? Focus on the cross. You want power to be victorious? Focus on the cross. You want power to walk in the victory, the triumph, to be able to say like Paul, I walk always in the triumph of Christ Jesus? Focus on the cross. Because that is where the enemy was defeated, disarmed and defeated. And that's where you'll see true humility. <laughs> Paul said it best, if I was to know anything, it's Christ and, and him crucified. crucified. Amen. He didn't say resurrected, he didn't say born, he didn't say any other thing. He said crucified. Crucified. I did, I determined yes. to know nothing but him and Christ and, and those crucified. go before him and said, Lord, look what I did, or just their pride. So I mean this is really it's really important to see this. That this the connection that Jesus is making here between being a conqueror, being an overcomer. And focusing on what he has done, his deeds. Keep my deeds, he said. Okay? Because otherwise there's there's such a danger. You because start it, focusing on yourself. And become self-reliant, exactly. self-dependent. Okay? It is pride. And, you know, it says in Proverbs chapter 6 that there are six things, yea, even seven, that are an abomination to the Lord. The Lord hates. And the first one is haughty eyes. It's that pride. And because that's the gateway to all sin. All of the sins that come from there. Okay? And pride is insidious. Mm. I mean, it just keeps poking and poking and poking away at you. Oh, all I'm the time. Don't, don't doubt that for a moment. Right. And the only way I know to, to deal with pride, because if you look around at what you've got, what you have, what you've earned, what you've done, if you look at how you compare to other people, pride will rise up. But focus on Jesus Christ, the King of glory, nailed to a cross in your <laughs> place. 
in your place the great act of worship that that was. All right? It has to humble you. Absolutely. And it says that if you humble, it says humble yourself and he will exalt you. Because as God the Father raised Jesus from the dead after that cross, if you humble yourself at the feet of Jesus in the front of that cross, I promise you, God will lift you up. He will lift you up higher and higher. In loving kindness, Jesus came. My soul in mercy to reclaim And from the depths of sin and shame Through grace He lifted me From sinking sands He lifted me With tender hand He lifted me from shades of night to plains of light, oh, praise His name, He 